friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to do my March reading wrap up and I managed to read a crap ton of books. Let's go ahead and look at what I thought my TBR was going to look like. So I had two definite plans, The Midnight Library and The Push, and then I had six books set aside for the Backlist Readathon. The Backlist Readathon seems so long ago. Um, however, this is what I managed to accomplish. I did read every single thing that I said I was going to. I read, I actually read The Push in February. I did read The Midnight Library this month and I read all six of the books that I had on my backlist readathon TBR. Now let's take a look at my reading goals. So just to remind you, I want to read six classics, 12 book of the months, 12 new releases, and seven backlist titles. And I read one classic this month, one book of the month, five new releases, and three of my backlist books. And that brings me to a total of one of six classics, five of 12 book of the month, 11 of 12 new releases, and five of seven of my backlist titles. So I'm very close to completing two of my goals. First book that I read in March is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. And a lot of you guys really, really loved this. The reading community in general did. It's about a woman that no longer sees a purpose in her life and she goes to commit suicide and she is thrust into this midnight library, which is the space in between life and death. And she gets a chance to relive some of her regrets in life. Basically, when you make a choice, your life splits and she was able to pick the opposite. Like, what if I went with this decision? And I didn't really like this that much. Um, it is fairly short, but I am definitely in the minority. A lot of people really, really loved this. I just thought it was pretty average. There was nothing like stand out. I've read books about where you make multiple life choices or you have a chance to um, do that sort of thing before. So it didn't feel new and fresh. And I thought the ending was very predictable. <laughs> um, and I think it would have been more powerful if the ending went a different way. But I think a lot of readers would have been upset by that. But yeah, so I gave this one three out of five stars. Next up, I read one of my most anticipated books of the year. I have convinced other people to pick up this book, including Jacqueline. I talked about it on my podcast, Talk Bookish to Me. I talked about it in my most anticipated releases for the beginning half of the year video. Um, I'm talking about The Marriage Pass by Brianna Cole. And I stand by that this cover is stunning. Um, just her lip gloss and like this boa and the orange is so pretty. I wish that the spine was orange. Um, but anyway, okay, now let's talk about the story itself. It feels like I read this forever ago, um, but this is about a woman, well, a married couple, and the woman gives her husband on their one year wedding anniversary a marriage pass, which basically for like one night they get to do whatever they want outside of their relationship. Um, yeah, and he is attracted to her sister, and so he comes on to the sister, he tells her, hey, I have this marriage pass, I'm interested in being with you, and they go forth with that. And it's just kind of the repercussions of that. And I don't know, I just thought the writing was very, I don't know, simple. Um, I did underline like quite a bit. I wanted to do like a review of this. I think the biggest problem was the writing. Um, it wasn't so much the story. The story was actually really good, but just the way it was written. And it did talk about like past and present and the time skipped around a lot. And it didn't tell you like the passage of time, how books like six months later or things like that. And that really bothered me. Be reading for long periods of time thinking like you're following a consecutive scene. And then it would be like the early morning the early morning air was warm for November. And you're like, oh, we were just in February. How are we in November already? What happened in between that time? I don't know. There was just something off about the writing. Like I said, the passage of time, some of the linguistic choices weren't my favorite. And the story just felt clunky, not finished, not polished. And there is a point where I started kind of like guessing what was going on. 
and yeah I, so I was really let down by this so I gave it a two out of five stars then it was like right before the backlist readathon started so I just wanted something quick um I picked up the second um Teen Titans like redo by Kimmy Garcia so this is Beast Boy and I loved this so much it's such a good read I love the art and I loved the side characters. I loved, it's kind of like Beast Boy's origin story um, a little bit. Like he doesn't know his origin story. His parents kind of like keep it from him. Um, but he's discovering that maybe there's more to him than meets the eye. And he's also very passionate about animals. And I just, I love his friends. And I just, I love the direction that the series is going. The third one, which is um, Raven and Beast Boy's love story, comes out in September. So obviously I'm really looking forward to that one. And I'm thinking about doing a reading, a readathon that's like based off of the Teen Titans. So if that sounds interesting, like let me know and I'll possibly do it. But yeah, so I read this and I rated it five out of five stars. I, the six books that were on my TBR for the backlist readathon. So all six books that I said I was going to read, I read in a week. So I read six books in six days actually. And I really enjoyed the experience of the backlist readathon. I really appreciated that I put these particular books on my TBR because like I did a classic, I did some of my backlist titles, um, I did some that have just been hanging around for a while, you know. I mean that's like the whole point of the readathon. Um, so I was just really happy to get these all off of my shelf, like my to be read shelf. And yeah, I didn't have any favorites, which was unfortunate. So we'll start with them in order that I read them. Um, so we have The Escape Room by Megan Golden, which this was okay. It was a three stars. I didn't think that The Escape Room was very escape room. Um, it was just kind of like they were trapped in an elevator and that doesn't say escape room to me, even though they were getting clues to like get out of the elevator. It just didn't feel as heart pounding or as like like trapped as I wanted to feel. I did like the past and the present and I liked how it was like weaving itself together but I would say the first three quarters felt very different than the last quarter and it just didn't match up the vibe. Like something happened with a character and they totally like went 180 and turned into a totally different person. And it just wasn't believable. Like this revenge plot thing was just not believable at all to me. And like I said, the escape room vibes were pretty lackluster. So three stars for this one. And I read The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. And I did an entire video where I read this one and the mothers for my Britt Bennett taste test. And if you watched either of those videos, my backlist readathon vlogs or that taste test video, you will know that I gave this story three out of five stars. I just don't think she's the writer for me because while I think she delves into really important topics um, like racism, classism, family, culture, you know, all of those things, her chapters are extremely long, like unnecessarily long, and the themes of her book are a little too vague. Like you think you're gonna go into the mothers, learning about mothers and have a really strong mother's theme and it just didn't. And then you think with this one, you're gonna have like the vanishing half and it is about twins and then it is about their um, daughters. But yeah, it just, it didn't work for me either. Like I said, I thought it was good. Um, the writing was okay. I just thought it was kind of like missing a lot, but I definitely go into more detail in that video. So do I, go ahead and check that out if you want more of my thoughts. Mentioning that, I have reviews for all of these books on Goodreads and the Storygraph, and the links to my Goodreads and my Storygraph are linked in the description box of this video. So if you want like a little bit more thoughts on these books, definitely check out those reviews. This is Adventure in Wonderland, and this one also let me down. Um, this is the classic that I read this month. I am glad I read it because I've never read the story before. I've only watched the like Disney movie. Um, and I know it's been remade like a couple of times, but yeah, I was just really let down by this one because I wanted more of like the side characters and stuff. And they were just like such a flash in the pan in this book. And it just went by like so fast. I thought that the scenes with the side characters would have been a little bit more in depth, but they just weren't. It was like so surface level. And I know this is the first book in the series and maybe that's why, but 
I don't know. I guess I was just like expecting more. Said Dear Daughter by Elizabeth Little. And this one I also rated three out of five stars. So the cool thing about this one is that it did have mixed media inside. It had like, um, let me give you some examples of the things that it had. It had like text messages and it had like newspaper articles. Here's another like email exchange. So that part was really cool. Um, and this one talks about a woman that got released um, from prison. But I'm seeing in breaking news, a California judge has overturned the first degree murder conviction of Jane Jenkins as part of the ongoing investigation into the mismanagement of evidence by the Los Angeles County Crime Lab from 2001 to 2005. So I really did like the mixed media aspects of this, um, but it's about a woman that's getting out of prison and she's been wrongfully accused or she's thinking she's been wrongfully accused of killing her mother. Um, and so she's kind of remembering stuff from that night and she's, while she was in prison, she was trying to like piece together the puzzle pieces and she found like some, she remembered some clues. So she started researching that when she was in prison. So when she got out of prison, it was her, you know, mission to like go and follow the clothes that she had found while she was in prison. So you think it's going to be like this cat and mouse game because obviously the media is after her because they definitely think that she did it. They just think she caught a lucky break and um, yeah but she ends up going to this like one town this one like small town and she's there for the entire novel and it's just so funny because like the media talks about how it's like after her and all of this and I'm like these must be the lamest media people ever because she was literally in the same place the entire time and you guys couldn't find her I don't know it was just kind of like unbelievable I mean it did have cool elements to the story but I don't know it just like it could have been so much better. 11 by Emily St. John Mandel and this has been on my bookshelf for a while. I ended up rating this story 3.5 stars so I have three and a half stars for this one. Um, this is a post-apocalyptic story and it's kind of told there's this one guy that dies on stage and all of the other characters are like really attached to this character in some way and kind of like there's this thing that happens in the world and there's this traveling band of like actors and there's this like thing at the airport and it's all like how these stories like intertwine all back to this one person that died on stage. Um, it's very interesting. It just felt like it didn't go deep enough. It didn't go dark enough. And I didn't like how it wasn't told in a linear timeline. I think I would have much preferred that, but it does like past and present, like before the incident, after the incident, it's like a Georgia flu or something like that. Um, I didn't like the before the Georgia flu. I liked the after. Um, so I really liked the post-apocalyptic like part of it. And I would have enjoyed it more if it would have got like all of the stuff out in the open before. And then we would have just like really gone and deep dived into the after. But because it kept flipping, it was just kind of like... I don't know I wasn't enjoying that part of it so I'd say I enjoyed about half of the book you know but it did speak to like I love The Walking Dead and I felt like it had like those vibes not the zombies per se but just like the world you know. I went for three and a half stars for this one and then the last book that I read for that readathon is Marlena by Julie Bunton and I thought I was really 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 gonna like this one and I talked about it in my vlog quite a bit it gave me vibes of like Long Bright River, there was another one, oh, um, All the Ugly and Wonderful Things, because it's about this really poor town, these really poor kids that are mixed up in like drugs and alcohol and like they don't get the attention that they need from their parents, they're kind of like left to their own devices. Um, and yeah, it just didn't really work for me because you have this one girl that moves to this town, Silver Lake, and the girl next door befriends, you know, the new girl, and she's a wild child, and the other one isn't, and now she's getting her to, like, break the rules and stuff, 
and um, Marlena died and you don't know how and it's kind of like well yeah what happened and I just it didn't have a satisfying ending. I ended up rating this two out of five stars but I know a lot of people actually loved this one so I don't know if it sounds interesting you definitely pick it up. A lot of people thought the writing was really beautiful. I didn't think it was anything special but that's just my personal opinion. Next book I read is actually Convenience Store Woman. It's translated from Japanese and I picked this up because I am looking to read more translated Japanese fiction and this is one that obviously if you search Japanese translated fiction it pops up all over the place. It was just a really quirky novel. Um, I wrote a really like short and sweet Goodreads story graph review that said like imagine working your dream job like in a convenience store and like living and thriving and just absolutely loving it and so that's what I said first and then I said now imagine that your friend tells you that their dream job is living in a convenience store and that's kind of exactly what the story is. So you have this woman who's been working in a convenience store for like more than half of her life. She absolutely loves it and she absolutely thrives in this environment and then you have her family and friends that are like you're really still working in the convenience store and it's her battling like I'm really happy here why is it not acceptable and all of that and I don't have a copy to show you because I actually let my neighbors borrow the book so yeah I don't know when I'll get that back all right after that I read I kind of got stuck um, in a time warp I think and I started reading a lot of different books and I wasn't I read like 100 pages of one 60 pages of another 30 pages of another and I just couldn't settle on anything but I finally finished The Girls at 17 Swan Street by Zara whatever um, and I did talk about this in a recent book haul that I did, my used book haul. Um, I picked this up at the book exchange and this is a story about um, a woman that goes to a eating disorder treatment center and it's about her time there and it kind of fla flashes like before you know how things were and how she kind of fell down that rabbit hole and just kind of like her treatment and the people at the center and stuff like that. I rated this one. I rated this one three out of five stars because I just don't really think it was anything special, but it was good. I liked it. Then I picked up on release day and read it on release day and vlogged it on release day. Every Value Break by Peter Swanson. And guys, this book was so good. I read it. I have a full vlog about it. I don't want to say too much about it. Um, it's a thriller by Peter Swanson about this woman leading up to her um, wedding day. She, it's like her bachelorette party. She meets this guy she sleeps with him then she gets married she goes off on her honeymoon and this guy shows up and he's wanting to talk to her and she's like go away I'm married now like that was a mistake like leave me alone and I don't want to say too much more I thought it was it's short um, I thought it was like adrenaline pumping I did think it was very thrilling um, definitely watch that vlog if you want no spoilers in the vlog um, but I don't want to say too much more I think you're either gonna love it or hate it some people are like oh my god it's so predictable like maybe but just like enjoy it for what it is in my opinion you know yeah and I picked up makeup breakup by Lily Menon and I rated this two out of five stars. I'm really really sad because it is like a hate to love romance about two rival app developers. One's um, app is called Makeup and the other's app is called Breakup and each of them have different ideas how their app is going to like change the dating scene forever. Um, you have the girl that's more bubbly that wants people to like if they if they're married or in a relationship she, she wants her app to help them through the difficult conversations that come with being in a relationship and he wants people to be able to seamlessly break up with someone without it getting too involved. So much about the apps though reminded me a tiny bit of One by One by Ruth Ware how they really went into their company and their startup and how things worked and all of that like that's what it does in here like I literally do not care about your stupid apps at all. I read Float Plan by Trish Dollar and this book was so freaking good. I rated it five out of five stars and I'm actually doing a video where I talk about 
these three romance books. So yeah, I'm going to um, do that video for you guys. It should be coming soon, um, but it will be talking like more in depth of my thoughts on which ones you should read and which ones you shouldn't. And I read a poetry collection and it's If They Come For Us by Fatima Asquar. And I absolutely love this cover. And this is a debut poetry collection um, that captures the experience of being a young Pakistani and Muslim woman in contemporary America. Um, I learned a lot reading this poetry collection. Um, there's actually a really good video that I watched that talks about um, the partition. So I'm going to try to remember to link that down below so you can learn a little bit more about it as well. I had remembered some things like randomly hearing it in like a history class or something like that but I really obviously didn't know too much about it and I feel like this poetry collection does talk about it a lot and watching that video really kind of like settled me in to the poetry collection and got my mind in the right space it's not a good thing it's a bad thing um so if you don't know anything definitely watch that little short little it's on youtube it's like a little like film that kind of tells you what it's about um unfortunately i didn't love this poetry collection i did feel like it was quite repetitive um it was very experimental though there were like lots of like fun things like this crossword puzzle and there was this page that I thought was very fun. Um, so there were lots of fun experimental type things in here. Um, and I definitely did a lot of um, like research and I looked up things. Um, if I came across like a word or a phrase I didn't know, I did lots of annotating and stuff like that, but I just didn't enjoy the overall experience. It didn't leave me happy and uplifted. It did teach me something, but I don't know, there was just something that didn't quite work for me, but a lot of people really love this. So I think it's a me thing, not a poetry collection thing, but it is what it is. You know? And then the last thing that I read is Actor Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert, one of my most anticipated books of the year. And I rated this story five out of five stars. But if I'm being completely honest, this one is my least favorite in the series. And I'm going to talk more about this in that video where I am going to talk to you about these three romances. So stay tuned for that. Hey, that's all for today's video. It was quite a bit. I read a lot, but I'm happy about that, you know, even though I had like just a few good standoffs books. So let me know how your reading month went in March. Let me know if you read any new favorites or anything like that. And I'll see you guys again in another video very soon. Bye!